Michelle, congratulations on um, New Order. It's been described as a dystopian film, but it feels to me very much like a film of the moment. Um, how much did you draw on either what you'd seen in, pro in Mexico in terms of protests or on bro broader global context, like those of Chile and Colombia, when you were writing the film? I started thinking seriously about making this film six years ago and but uh, I, I was I was mainly concerned about the the rise of totalitarian and fascist um, forces in in Europe and militarization everywhere and, and xenophobia uh, and then of course I figured I wouldn't shoot a movie in Europe I should do it in my own country and I started uh, I, I call it a dystopian because for me, six years ago, it, it really looked like something that was, you know, far. I, I, the, the main subjects are, were there already, social disparity and um, uh, repression and all that. Uh, I, I think history only, it's a cycle and we go back to the same uh, dark stages and, and, and mistakes over and over again. So I, I was already i i had a full script three years ago and then the yellow vest started uh happening and chile was upside down and uh hong kong and and these were only confirmations that that the film was uh that, that i had to make the movie and i i was careful into not making a political movie about my own country because I don't think it's a Mexican uh, movie or a Mexican concern exclusively. I think the movie can portray um, what's going on in many different places, each of them, of course, with its particular reasons and, and, and problems, conflicts. But altogether, I think, I don't know if you agree, people are simply angry everywhere. It's, and it's not about poor people. It's just, for example, Chile was interesting and, and the same about France because People went out to, to protest, you know, uh, and riots and everything happened as uh, with Black, Black Lives Matter in the States. And, and it's not because they're poor, it's because they're angry. Chile is supposed to be the, the country out of Latin and South America that's, uh, the, uh, where people have a better life, whatever that means. And then uh, everybody was surprised that they're not satisfied. It's not about having, uh, it's not only social disparity. People are unsatisfied everywhere. And I think that's a time bomb if we don't uh, listen to it and, and if there's no empathy. I remember reading an interview, I think when you were in Venice, uh, uh, presenting the film for the first time, where you said, I'm not sure what my film is about. And yet it feels incredibly topical and urgent. I, what, <laughs> I guess what I was trying to say is the film should be about many things at the same time. I, I, this was a really, really hard script to, to write. And I, I wanted the film to, to be very ambiguous and to uh, contain a lot of the chaos that uh, I've been living throughout my 41 years in Mexico. Um, so the film is about many things at the same time. And I don't, I don't want to be the one that narrows it. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to narrow it down just by saying the film's about this, because then it, it would be a shame. I think the movie again can contain, uh, can even serve a citizen of whatever other country. Uh, so that's why I get away by not saying the film is about this. It should be about a lot more. But in many ways, it's about humanity not learning lessons, about humanity becoming hardened. I suppose in many ways, what struck me about the film is the way so many of the characters absolve themselves of responsibility. And in the end, action is about, uh, about taking responsibility. I agree with you. Uh, I think also that we live in darkness in terms of, we never know what the official uh, there, there's never an account, uh, uh, an official account or a real, a truthful account of things. Uh, and again, it's not only in Mexico. Uh, we are puppets or whatever word you want to use to describe how little we know about 
why we're living the way we're living and to me uh, if, if 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 we keep letting politicians and and uh, control uh, and militarize our our countries and 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 tell us what's right and wrong uh, following their own uh, interest and and not you know without any ethics it's, it's like let's use black life matters as, as an example only because certain brutality was caught on video uh things were you know people were able to claim but and go out to the streets and, and protest but the, the the government and the military kept saying for, for example i you remember when they pushed the the the, the elder man and he finally died he knocked he said even that morning they said we didn't touch him and then a video appears it's we're really not learning i agree with you I, originally you'd called the film i think uh, uh dreams of a few lo que algunos soñaron when did you settle on the title new order and why uh i like the previous title but it, but it was a bit complicated um i it 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 it, it threw even more ambiguity which was my my uh, initial uh and still what, what I like about the film, but I think it was a little bit too much. Uh, I, I like the fact that the dreams of a few could have been the dreams of the military, the dreams of people that are rebelling and uh, rebellious and trying to, to find a better life. It could be the dreams of just staying, you know, keeping the, the, uh, the good life for, for the upper class. So I, I like the ambiguity of the title, but Nuevo Orden seemed to sum up in a stronger way and, and with a bigger impact the global effect that I'd like the movie to, to provoke. Tell me about the opening of the film, um, because it's incredibly striking. I mean, you have a, a number of, of really uh, strong images, the woman in green paint, the hospital patients being forced out of their beds to make room for those injured in the streets, and the painting that we see in close up, which I believe is um, a painting by uh, Omar Rodriguez Graham, Only the Dead Have Seen the End of the War After Tiepolo. Um, tell me a little bit about those images and why that painting, which of course we see in, in Marianne's home later. Yeah. Why I wanted to, to begin the film uh, 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 with, a, uh, with, with a strong punch and with a lot of energy and, and with strong visuals. And then, of course, the hardest task is to keep that dramatic tension throughout the whole movie. That's why the movie is uh, not a very long one, but it never stops. It, it sort of it starts with that Shostakovich mood, music and, and and those images. Uh, and those images, some are scenes that we will see uh, later in the movie. Some are just uh, symbolic images of what might be happening in Marianne's head. Our lead character if we can choose on a lead because there are many points of view uh but i guess mainly what i wanted to to start saying is this is not a simple movie it's not just a story about a a, a character we're not gonna follow a small conflict this is a study uh a social study not a political study but a social study on a bigger scale of a whole country and that's something hard to, to I, people kept telling me, don't make the film, uh, you know, like even friends and, and people uh, quitting the movie, like cruel saying, you're going crazy. You, you won't pull it off uh, because they read the script and they kept saying, this is not uh, feasible. But I think those images really helped to, to set the tone. And then uh, again, the task was to keep up that, that energy. And you manage it. I mean, quite, quite <laughs> shockingly, I think it does feel for the viewer, it felt to me like an assault um, and a really powerful one. I came out of the film incredibly shell-shocked. I think the only truthful way to speak about this uh, very urgent, the important subject matters is in a, in a straightforward way and, and, and to really not, not beat around the bush in, in terms of how would it be if it happens you know if it explodes and i'm not even showing the worst 
that what would you know what would happen i'm showing very little it, it's it's merely a a, a a heads on of let's be careful let's not arrive to that point mm -hmm. but if you see what i mean let's go back to what happened in europe 80 years ago uh with with fascism which is back in fashion uh for its uh different reasons but there are the same reasons that's why also i like the title nuevo orden it's it's worse than the new than the old order and it's not a new order it's there's some irony to the title as well but if 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 we haven't learned that we cannot just give power to the military in that fashion every brutal aspect of the movie bodies burning and everything that's shown there will happen again, time and again. If we don't learn, we're doomed to repeat. You mentioned earlier uh, the character of Marianne, um, and I think uh, Nayan Gonzalez Norvin's performance is extraordinary as, as Marianne. Tell me why you cast her, because I think you're right, it is a, a, an ensemble cast. Uh, you have many protagonists, but she does come out as, as, as a really fascinating character. There's an element of empathy, but there's also a great naivety there. Yeah. And of course, yeah. you know, she bears the brunt of so much uh, of the, personally, her body of so much of the violence in the film. Tell us a little bit about, about that character and casting uh, Nayan in the role. I wrote this, the part for her. Most actors I, I wrote specifically for uh, those actors. Uh, I know Nayan since she was 14 and uh, she's now living in New York for a few years. She's, she's been, you know, working on stage and really uh, making an effort to uh, but she she hadn't had a a, 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 a juicy uh, role, uh, uh, so this is not her debut, but it's kind of the big presentation, and and I'm very proud of her work. And I took advantage of the fact that I know her since she was 14 because I know how she speaks and what she does and how she feels. And she, um, I, I don't know if she would like to hear this, but she is a little naive. Uh, she's very clever, but but. There's something about uh, the character's behavior that I knew she would pick on immediately, and, and that was the case. I don't rehearse, so we, we didn't have to go that way. I didn't direct her much, I gotta say. Uh, she, she was really good. Her instinct was correct, and the fact that I wrote it for her. But I also wrote it for Monica del Carmen that plays Marta, uh, uh, who probably took care of Marianne uh, when she was uh, uh, growing up. and and. And the same from for Dario, who's the main actor of my first movie. So I, I, the, what I enjoy the most is uh, working with actors. And tell me a little bit about the ending of the film, because the ending, I've talked about the strikingness of the beginning, the ending of the film is, is also pretty extraordinary. I mean, uh, your films often take the viewer in an unexpected direction in the ending, but here, revolution really doesn't lead to a better world. Yes, because a change is not necessarily for, for, for the best. And, and I, I, I do believe in change, of course, but we need to be clever about it. Uh, we cannot be naive. We cannot simply follow false leaders. We cannot just, uh, uh, you know, explode in violence. So uh, to me, it was very important to arrive to that ending. Uh, and again, many people, when they read the script, they said, at least Marianne should be safe shoot two endings and i'm like you're missing the whole purpose of the movie the reason why i'm shooting this movie is to arrive to that end to have uh, daniel and his father looking at uh, at, at at marta uh, you know they they, they they put her there they they the but but everything's so complicated that you cannot even fully i mean they're t horrible characters at the end but you cannot fully judge them because they are they are completely lost and confused. I think Marta and Christian, those two characters are the one that break my heart the most because they really are loyal and, and trying to, to, to do the right thing. And I think that's also unsettling for people because audiences like little children still want to be like, okay, just let's make sure that, that at the end the good wins or that it's not so, and come on, life is, let's just look back uh, or, or look at nowadays, the way we're living. Uh, and again, Black Lives Matter uh, not long ago in the States. And you remember they ended up 
uh, shouting Eat the Rich in Beverly Hills. So it went from Black Lives Matter to, to that immediately. Uh, so these characters I'm portraying, they have it coming, but it's not like the angry, the anger is gonna bring them down. They're still gonna kick back. So you see what I'm saying? That had to be the ending of the movie. I think, and that goes back to a lot of your work, uh, which is, which has ambiguity uh, and that refuses to tie things up neatly for a viewer at the end. I, I, I like to think that this way the viewer will, will keep thinking about uh, the movie and the conflicts and you, you, I'm not giving any answer. It's, it's more about raising questions. And that's the type of film I like watching and I like being provoked and I like, I hate when I go into a movie and I know exactly what's gonna happen and, and that's what happens. That's very disappointing. So, so that's why I write the, without a formula and that, that's why I like surprising the viewers, uh, you know, in a respectful way, of course. Um, Michelle Franco, thank you so very much for this wonderful um, interview and for your wonderful film. Uh, it is uh, an honest, um, uh, open film in terms of what it asks of its uh, of its viewer and we wish you all the very best for it thank you very very much thank you thank you so much